Okay, so if this is the, your first time using Scratch, so let's quickly um, go through all the different parts of it. So on the right here is where you've got the, um, the screen where the game will happen. Uh, underneath well, you'll have all your characters here. So I've got Sprite 1, which is the cat that's there already. Um, you've got your stage, you can change the backdrop. And in the center is the space where you give instructions to the characters. So you'll be using drag and drop blocks, which you can see are all here on the left. And they're all color coded by what kind of blocks they are. So you can see move, turn, and go to. These are all movement blocks and they're in motion. And all the different categories are color coded. So you can easily find what you're looking for. So we're going to make a simple chasing game. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete this cat because I don't want the main, the default character. It's a bit boring. So you click on the little bin icon that seems to be new. That's next to sprite one. And the cat's gone. So now you want to click on choose a sprite. So I'm going to choose a character to chase the mouse pointer first. It's the one I'll be controlling. Um, we'll do it maybe a mouse and a, uh, or a cat and a dog. I didn't want that cat. I don't want that cat either. Um, maybe we want to do a cat and a dog. A ball and a dog. So. Just something simple, like the ball's going to chase the mouse pointer around, but the ball will be chased by a dog. And the longer I survive and keep the ball away from the dog, the more points I'll get. Okay, so I added the ball, and I also want to add my dog. So I add, choose a new sprite. So again, you can paint your own, um, you can pick a random one, you can upload a picture, or you can choose one from the library that already exists. And I'm just going to pick the same, or a dog, maybe. I like that one. So we've got a dog and a ball. If I want to adjust the size of them, say if I want the dog to be a bit smaller, I make sure I click on the dog so it's highlighted in blue. And then you can just click in here and change the size. If you want it to be half the size, put it 50 and so on. But I'll just go for 80. Now, the first thing I want to do is when this game starts, I don't want this dog to be close to the ball or I'll lose straight away. So the first thing you're going to do is give them both starting positions. So if you drag the ball into one corner and drag the dog into another, then what we need to do is give them both starting positions. So because we've already put them in position, there's a block we can use which will have the values, the coordinate values, so the position on the screen already in there for us. So we don't need to type anything in manually. So I want them to go there when I start the game. So when the green flag is clicked. So the first block you'll need, as usual, is when the green flag is clicked. So I use that block. And the first thing I want them to do is to go to this position. So go to X and Y. So that's the position that the dog is already in. No, sorry, the, the ball is already in. So as you can see, I'm programming the ball because the ball's been highlighted and it's, the picture is there of the ball. So every time I press the green flag, the ball will go back to that position. So it goes back to this position, this X and Y coordinate. Okay, and the same thing I want the dog to do. So I click on the dog. So you can see the code disappears because I'm now looking at the instructions for the dog, not the instructions for the ball. So we can go and do the same thing when the green flag is clicked. And this one, as you can see, also has go to with different values in it which is telling me to go to that position where the dog is already. So if I drag them both away now, when I press the green flag, they both have instructions to react to that, which is to go to these positions. So you've given them the starting positions. Now you want to think about the movements. So what I want the ball to do is to follow the mouse pointer around the screen. So like in the maze game I made last time, if you um, want something to follow something, you need to be pointing towards it and then going towards it or moving towards it. So what we need is a point towards and the ball is going to be following the mouse pointer. So that's fine. I can leave it as it is and move. Now, if it only does it once, the ball does point towards and move. As you can see, but it only does it once. So I want it to repeat that over and over again, repeatedly do it. Just carry on, keep pointing towards the ball 
Uh, sorry, the mouse pointer, then move 10 steps, then point towards, then move 10 steps. I don't want it to keep going back to the start. So we want to repeat only these blocks here. And to repeat things, you need a loop, which in Scratch is also known as a forever block. If you want it to happen forever, you could repeat a certain amount of times if you wanted to stop after a certain amount of times. But we just want it to go forever. And now the ball will follow the mouse pointer on the screen. So it's always reacting to where the mouse pointer is, it points towards it, then moves, and it points towards it, and then moves. And if I press the green flag, it always goes back to the corner. Okay. Now, all I need to do is if the ball touches the dog, I want it to be game over. So, we need to use an if statement. So this is an if block. It says, if something is true, then do something. So I want it to be constantly checking if something is true, if the ball is touching the dog. So if touching, and you can see when you drag these shaped blocks into the kind of diamond shaped hole in the ifs, you drag it so the left hand side goes into it. So for example, that won't work. But if you drag it so the left hand side fits in, then it stretches it out and it fits in nicely. So, I don't want it to be checking if it's touching the mouse pointer because it's chasing the mouse pointer. I want it to check, is it touching the dog? So the dog's called dog one and that's what it's checking. So, when I click on this, um, I lost my train of thought now. So, if it's touching the dog, then do something. And what we want to do is end the game. So, I want it to change a backdrop, maybe. Or maybe I'll leave that later. Well, we'll just do stop game. If touching dog one, then stop game. So, what I want to do, if touching dog one, then stop the game. You'll find stop in control. You might not see it there, but if you scroll down a little bit, then stop all is there. And now if I just run into the dog, you can see the game stops. Now, it's not very a hard, it's not a very hard game at the moment because the dog doesn't move. So we need to get the dog to be chasing the ball. So I want to be programming the dog. So the first thing we do, click on the dog. And he's going to be moving in an almost identical way to the ball. So see if you can do this without me uh, making uh, doing it myself. See if you can make the dog chase the ball. And if you want a hint, it's very similar to what we did with the movement of the ball. Okay, so this is how you do it. We need obviously, oops, we need that a forever loop. We want it to repeat this. We want it to point towards not the mouse pointer but the ball we don't want both these characters chasing the mouse pointer we want the ball to chase the mouse pointer and the dog to chase the ball and then once it's pointing towards it also needs to move towards it so now i've got both moving and the problem is the dog is moving 10 steps which if we check the ball is the same speed 10 steps so we need the dog to be a bit slower to give us a chance or we'll always lose it almost instantly so we make the dog maybe half the speed of five steps. Now we've got a chance of getting away from the dog. Okay. And if I let the dog touch the ball, we still lose. So this last thing I want to do then is make it a bit um, more fun. Make it look a bit more appealing first. If we want to add a background to the game, we click on stage, then choose a backdrop down here. Obviously you can design your own if you wanted to by painting it, but I'm just going to pick a simple one. Um, where would the dog be chasing a ball? Why not on the moon? There you go. So the dog chasing a ball on the moon, which makes no sense, but that's where he's chasing the ball. And another thing we want to do is have maybe a game over screen. So when the ball 
He's touching the dog. We'll put a game over screen in there. So I need to click to create a new backdrop again. And maybe we'll use a pre-existing backdrop and just edit it. So second backdrop, and just like the last maze game I made, I'm probably going to choose stars and make a Star Wars version again, because I'm that unimaginative. And the backdrop, remember anytime you want to edit something in Scratch, my biggest tip when you're editing is always click convert to vector first. That just means that instead of one layer, you can add layers on top of the pre-existing picture. So instead of replacing the actual pixels and colors like all in one layer, with a vector, you can put things on top and move them around a lot easier. So you're just overlaying the picture with stuff instead of actually replacing the picture itself. So if I want to make some text that's kind of goldy yellow, you can use the fill, change the color sliders, and then I'm just going to type game over. If you use the mouse then you can drag to rearrange the size and place it where you want to go. Okay, so I've got my game over screen. And as you can see, it's called stars. If you want to rename it to game over because it makes more sense, you can do that. So now it's called game over. My background is called moon and my game over screen is called game over. So if I go back to the ball now, if touching dog one, we wanted to change to game over first. So in Lux, you'll find switch backdrop to and my backdrop for when we lose the game is game over. The problem is when I start the game, it's already the game over screen because that's the last one that I chose. So we need to make sure at the start of the game, just like giving the dogs a starting position, we give the background a starting background. So the first thing, you can put this in any code really, as long as it's straight after the green flag clicked. So I'll just put it in here to make it easier. Switch backdrop to moon. So first thing that happens when I press green flag, the ball goes to position and it tells the backdrop to switch to moon. And then when I lose, game over screen appears. So one other thing I could do is when we lose, we can make the characters hide, which is a small extension. Um, so to do that, it's very simple for the ball. If I just put hide in there, it switches the backdrop, it hides and it stops all. And the problem is the dog can't do the same thing. But the ball can send a secret message to the dog just before the game finishes, telling the dog to hide. And to do that in Scratch, if you want two sprites to communicate with each other, to talk, actually send messages to each other, then you use a broadcast. So in events, because if you're sending a secret message, that's coming as a, an event, because you can react to it. Um, you'll find broadcast and broadcast on wait. Um, either should be fine. So if you put it just before a stop ball, maybe broadcast on wait would be better. So the ball, if it touches the dog, it switches the backdrop to game over for us, it hides and it broadcasts the message and it could be something like tag. You can imagine this is like playing tag on the playground. When you're touching someone, maybe they don't quite feel you, you touching them. You have to shout tag, same kind of thing. So the ball is going to shout tag to the dog, which doesn't make much sense, but it, it kind of it works anyway. And then you click on the dog. Now you want the dog to react to the message. So at the moment, he'll just ignore it. The, the ball's sending a message, but the dog doesn't know what to do when he hears it, because you haven't told him what to do. So when I receive tag, it's the block you need to react to the tag message we just made. And all we need the dog to do is to hide. So you can see what's happening. The ball is touching the dog, it switches the backdrop, the game over, it hides. It sends a message and waits until whatever is reacting to that message actually does what they're supposed to. So it waits here until the dog has received the message, it hides, and then the ball stops the game. This happens so fast though, it won't even look like it's waiting. 
Okay. So now if I play it, both characters hide, and you've got a nice working game. But is there an issue we're going to have here? If I restart the game, I've got no characters. So can you work out why that's happened? I'll give you three seconds. Okay, so the reason is because you've told the characters to hide, but you never told them to show again when you restart the game. So these are all kind of, you need to think about the initial state of the game and how you want it to look. You need the characters to be showing at the start, otherwise it's not really a game. It's just nothing's happening. So you want to put a show block, which obviously is in look. So it's the opposite to hide. You can put it anywhere as long as it's outside the forever loop. So I'll just put it in on the top. First thing it does, it shows, goes there, switches backdrop. And the same for the dog. We need the dog to show as well. And now we've got them back. So the game is working as we wanted it to. I'm not very good at it. Oh, actually, there you go. Decent. Now what we need is to add something to make it more fun, which is a score system. So this is something I haven't done before on these tutorials, but you're gonna have to use a variable. So a variable you might have heard of in science lessons, if you're in school, kind of it's something that changes whilst you're doing something. So in an experiment, you have variables that change. You're measuring one usually um, and seeing how it changes compared to another one. Um, so it's usually like time and maybe if you're measuring the heat or something, you can measure the heat over time. So your two variables are heat and time. Um, so just like that, we want a score. The score is going to start at zero and the longer we survive and we don't get caught, the points, the score is going to change. So as the time goes up, the score goes up as well. So to make a variable, you click on make a variable in variables. So go to variables, make a variable, and then call it whatever you want. This is just a label. It doesn't matter if you call it score or points, bananas. It doesn't make any sense to call it bananas. So it's probably best to call it something that makes sense, but it would still work regardless. So I've added a score, and as you can see in the game, there's now a little scoreboard in the top left corner. But that doesn't make it work. Just because I've added a scoreboard doesn't mean the game knows what to do with it. We have to give instructions on how to add points, how to add score to the game. And you do that using these new blocks you've now got. This score block here, and you can set score to something or change score by something. Okay. So when we're thinking about the score, it's going to be based on the time. So we kind of need a timer. Um, depending on how you want to do this, one way could be just when the things are moving, they change the score. So say the ball points towards mouse pointer, it moves ten steps, it adds changes changes one um, changes the score by one, then checks if it's touching and repeats that. So that would work. If I just show you. So you can see the score goes up pretty quickly. Depends on how many points you want your game to have. Because it's, it's pretty much going up as fast as my computer can actually process the instructions. So 378. Another way to do it, if I take that out, is we can make our own kind of timer. So separate to this script. So we call this a script, the series of instructions for the ball. But these are quite clever actors. They can do two things at the same time. So they can deal with two scripts at the same time. So what I could do is when the green flag clicked, then forever change score by one. Now this would actually be faster than what I just did because it's not doing these instructions and then doing the change score. It's just doing that separately. So it's slightly faster. It can do that a little bit faster than the one. But what if I wanted to limit it so it only adds one point per second? So if I survive for five seconds, I get a score of five. Well, what I could do is make it wait one second before it changes the score. So in control, I can use a wait block, wait one second. So now the score goes up by one every second. So it's up to you. You can 
maybe put the score up by five every second or make it wait two seconds. It's completely up to you guys, or however you want your game to work. So be creative. Um, one problem you might have noticed is every time I restart the game, I still got loads of points. So that's kind of cheating. So what we need to do is, and I'm sure you can guess, I want to, when the game starts, set the points to zero. So when the green flag is clicked, we set, not my variable, but score to zero. Okay, and make sure you put it outside there. If you put it inside the forever, what's going to happen is it's going to set the score to zero, wait one second, changes the score to one, and instantly sets the score back to zero. So you'll, your score will just be going between zero and one very quickly. It's going so quickly that you can't actually see it doing it. Because it's changed to one and then immediately goes back to zero. So just be careful of little mistakes like that. And now the game is working. Okay, so that's how you'd add a score based on time. And last thing, which is a pretty cool thing to do, would be to add a high score system. Which is, I mean, the logic behind it is it makes sense when you say it out loud, but if you haven't done it before in Scratch, it's maybe a bit tricky. So you needed a second variable. You want the score, but you also want a high score. So make a new variable, same way we did that last time. Click on make a variable. Um, and for some reason, they always do a high score like this with an I. It's up to you if you want to be precise and do a high score like that. Just for shortening it, how much space it takes up on the screen, really. Um, and now we need to think about how we want the high score to work. So what we want to do is when the, the ball has touched the dog, before it stops, we need it to check, is the score that I've just had, is it more than the high score that already exists? If it is, then I need to replace the high score with the score that I've just had. So that makes sense. How would you do that in Scratch? Well, I said if the high score is more than the score. So that is the condition. It's an if block. I'll make sure the stop all is outside it because it likes to swallow blocks. So make sure it's out here inside that if as it was before. If and as I said, if the score is more than the high score. So we need a more than block, which looks like this. And variables, if the score, so we can now use these rounded blocks that fit in nicely here. If the score is more than the high score, then I need to set the high score to be the score I just had. So set the high score to score. And that's it. So every time the ball touches the dog, switches it back to the game over, hides, broadcasts the message so they both hide, um, so the, the dog hides, sorry. And then last thing, before you stop the whole game, check if the score is more than the high score, then set high score to score. And it's as simple as that. So obviously the high score was zero before. So if I get six points, now it's set the high score to six. If I get less than that, well, this wasn't true. So it didn't do this because this score well, it wasn't bigger than high, the high score, six, one is not bigger than six, then it didn't do this. It just ignored it and went to stop all. And that's how you'd make a simple chasing game with points and so on. You can mess about with it, maybe add some more things after a certain amount of time. Maybe a second dog that appears you have to avoid or power ups. Um, maybe I could show you actually how to do that. Maybe just something really simple like after 10 seconds an apple appears and if you touch it the dog gets stuck now it's not the simplest thing to do um i have to think about this carefully but let's say i don't know why apple came to mind but there's an apple there um if you touch the apple the dog gets back to it gets put back to the center maybe you can only use the apple once so i'm going to keep it down in the bottom corner um, so what I want the app to do is, at the start, I don't want it to show, I only want it to show maybe after the score gets to 10. Um, let's see, what shall we do then? 
So it's going to hide. Oh, it's allowed multiply outside. Hide and then wait until the score. Where are my, my variables? No, I do want operators. Yep. Wait until the score is 10. So wait until the score equals 10. Then I want it to show. Um, maybe go to a random position first. So it's going to, every time it'll pick a random position, show. And then after that, I want it to wait until the ball has touched it. So if we go wait until touching ball, and if that's happened, then it'll move on to the next instruction, which means that it can, but we can do whatever we want. We want the dog to go back to the center of the screen for five seconds or to get stuck there. So I need to send a message to the dog, which means I need to broadcast, if you remember how to do that. So in events, broadcast. Um, so I had one written called power up before. I edited it out, but now it's back. So see if I want to edit, call it power up, which I've just done. And then you click OK. And if you broadcast power up, I need the dog to react to it. So if I click on when I receive power up, then I want the dog to go to zero, zero. That's the center of the screen. Go to zero, zero, which means right in the center where X is zero and Y is zero. And then maybe wait there for five seconds. So it gives you an advantage. So if I can survive for 10 seconds now, when the apple appears, if I touch it, the dog will be teleported back to the center and I'll have to wait there for five seconds. Oh. What happened there? Ah. So if you saw what happened, it did do it, but because it was forever doing this as well, it kind of broke out of that because these were two things were happening at the same time. So how would you fix that? What we could do is instead of making it go to the center and waiting five seconds, just making it glide. Five seconds is probably the easiest way to fix that problem to zero, zero. So let's try again. So as you can see, I still make loads of mistakes when I'm doing Scratch and you always get loads of problems. You just have to work out what's the easiest way or the best way to fix the problems. So I touched the apple. Now the dog is slowly glo um, gliding towards the center for five seconds. Uh, one thing I want to happen as well is if I touch the apple, that the apple actually vanishes. So after it's broadcast power up, I want it to hide. Now, if I wanted that to happen every time I got the score into 10 seconds, because I've got most of the instructions there already, I just need to repeat. There's one thing I need to change, and this is going to get a bit difficult, unless you understand what modular um, mathematics is. I'll try my best to explain it here, but I want to. I want this to repeat, basically. So it's, it's going to keep repeating this until, well, you've lost the game. Now, once the score's gone past 10, it's never going to hit 10 again, so this will only happen once. And the apple won't come back. So what we need to do is tell it every time the score increases by 10, or every time the score is a multiple of 10. So this is where we need to use modulo. Now, what that means is every time, say, score mod 10, so just write it out first, score mod 10. So every time I divide the score by 10, Whatever's left over, if there's a remainder, then this will give the remainder when I divide the score by 10. So I want it to be every time that the score divided by 10 
has no remainder left. So it, you can divide the score by 10 perfectly with no remainder, then I want the apple to appear. So every time that score mod 10 is equals to zero, so there's no remainder. There you go. So every time score divided by 10 has no remainder equals to zero, now this will work every 10 seconds, every time the score gets to 10 or 20 or 30 and so on. Now, unfortunately, zero divided by 10 also has no remainder. So it's there at the start. <laughs> so maybe what we should do to fix that is make sure it waits at least one second first. At the start of the game. No, nope, we'll make it wait two seconds. So, also need to put a hide at the start to make it look like it's not there at the start. Okay. So, lots of little fixes, but we've got there. So now every time we get to 10, the apple will appear. It disappears when we touch it. And then if we get to 20, the apple will appear again. And that will just repeat every time the score goes up by 10. Let's see if I can get a new high score. That's obviously, it's easier because I can now control the dog with an apple. So, I'll end it there. That is how you would add a power up like that. Don't worry too much if you don't understand that, but as I said, if the score divided by 10 has a remainder of zero, so basically whenever it's a multiple of 10, then it waits until that point, so every 10 seconds. Okay, so that's how you make a chasing game in Scratch. Hopefully I've explained everything in enough detail there. Some extended, um, quite complex things towards the end, but variables are very powerful, so the more used you are to using variables in Scratch, much better you'll get at making games or cool programs. Okay, hope you enjoyed that.